I'm Keeper Mel here at Elwood Park Zoo. Welcome to Zoo School Live. We're going to spend some time today talking about our cougars, russet and yukon, and some winter adaptations and other fun stuff. Right now they're being very sleepy kittens, so hopefully maybe they'll get up and do some fun stuff. Otherwise we're just going to talk about them while they adapt to the cold today by taking little naps, which is a really fun thing to do. I like to do it in the winter too. So we've got our two cougars here. Russet is in his shelter in his little straw bed there. And then his sister Yukon is up there on her wall. That's her very favorite place to be because she can see a lot of the zoo from up there. So that's where she likes to take naps. Our cougars are the medium of our cats here. They're actually one of the biggest cats in the Americas, smaller than the jaguars who do range up into Texas but much bigger than our ocelot and our bobcat. Even though these guys are big for cats, they're actually technically classified as a small cat, which is pretty cool. And one of the reasons they classify them that way is because even though they're some of the loudest cats in the world and they make the most different kinds of noises, they hiss and chirp and growl and yell and scream and purr, they can't roar. And that's one of the big differences between big cats and little cats. So even though in size they're pretty big, they're technically called one of the small cats. If you're wondering just how big they are, I have it written down because we weigh these guys every two weeks to make sure that they're staying nice and healthy. And Russet, the boy there, weighs 112 pounds as of last week. And Yukon, his sister's a little bit smaller, she weighs 91 pounds. Cougars can range anywhere from about 75 to 150 pounds on average, and the biggest one ever on record was something like 260 pounds. So that's more than two russets put together. That's a pretty big cat. Right, so we were really hoping, since we put out some fun enrichment, that these guys would come out and play today, but they're having nap time. So you can see their Christmas tree, which is one of our favorite seasonal enrichments that we have here. The reason it's not as much fun today is because I gave it to him yesterday. And yesterday it was a really fun toy. Today, it's just a tree. They've seen it already. Inside that Christmas tree, I put two of the smaller balls that they like to play with. And also a giggle ball that is their favorite toy in the whole world. Last time we asked for toys, we got five of them, which we love. But I think I made it too hard for them to find because they haven't gotten it out of their tree yet today. So instead of playing with the fun things, they're having naps. Like most big cats, cougars will sleep, oh, anywhere from 15 to 20 hours a day because they have to save all that energy for the times that they hunt, which is mostly around dusk and dawn. So that's going to be when they're the most active. The middle of the day, that's sleepy time. We're here today, we want to talk a little bit about cold and cougars in the cold. These guys are actually more active when it's cold outside than when it's nice and warm. They're not showing that off for you right now, but I promise that it's true. If you come out here in the summer and it's 95 degrees, you might not even see the, the cougar. And that's because Yukon, who's up there on her wall, some days she just doesn't even come outside. She says it is too hot and I'm going to sleep inside all day today. When it's nice and cool, it means that they're burning more energy. So they want to come outside and look for more food. They come out and they eat snacks from us in the morning. And they're usually a little bit more active throughout the day when it's cold outside. In order to stay warm on these cold days, you can see how they're both curled up pretty good. Cougars are, as we talked about, they're pretty big. And if you measured them, from the tip of their nose to the tip of their tail, they can be anywhere from eight to nine feet long. And one third of that, so a full three feet, which might be taller than some of you watching, three feet of that is tail. So they're close to snow leopards who I think you know love the cold. A snow leopard, half of its body length is tail. In cougars, it's only 30, 35% of their body is tail, but they'll actually use that Kind of as a blanket when they curl up and they'll use their little tail to cover their face 
to stay warm when it's really cold outside. Another nice thing that they have for staying warm in the cold weather, so you might have, say, mom or dad who says, if you go out, you gotta put your coat on. We put our coats over, they grow a coat under. They've got a really thick, nice warm undercoat that they put on in the winter, and it makes them look even bigger. So they look much smaller and sleeker, even though they weigh about the same in the summer. And that's because they're trapping all that air in their little floofy undercoats all winter long in order to stay warm. They've got a nice big home range. So cougars live everywhere from the southern end of Alaska, way up north, all the way down through Chile in South America. They live in something like 28 different countries. Um, and it's at least 13 states within the United States. So they have to be prepared for all kinds of different weather, whether it's really bitter cold up in Alaska, or there's actually some that live in Florida where they have to be really hot all the time. So they look a little bit different in different places, depending on how hot or cold it's gonna be. Oh, Russ, are you gonna get up just a little bit? If Russet shows you his Big old paws, which would be great. Russ, you want to show us your paws? No, that's fine too. You could just curl up the other way. We love you anyway. One of the things these guys do that changes from summer to winter out in the wild is how they hunt. Cougars are ambush predators, which means they've got to sneak up on their prey. They can see really well. They hear really well. Their sense of smell is not as good as like a dog's is better than ours, but it's not the best. So they like to be able to see their prey. When it's nice and hot, they just rely on that eyesight and they sneak up on stuff. In the winter, they actually follow other animals' tracks. So they'll get up somewhere high and they'll watch where the deer and the elk have been walking because they can see their tracks in the snow. And they'll just go ahead and follow those tracks so they don't have to work as hard to find dinner. One of the ways that they can do that and run so much faster than their prey in the winter is because of those big old paws. They're like having snowshoes. They're somewhere about three to four inches across. Um, so their paws, even though they're smaller than the jaguars, their feet are almost as big. And one of the differences, and I wish that I could show you pictures or that Russet would cooperate, is even though their paws are almost as big, the pads are smaller, so they've got more fur in between their toes to stay warm. And the little pad parts, which are the parts that are going to touch the cold and the snow, are much smaller. So those parts are more insulated than they are in the jaguars, who don't typically have to deal with quite as much snow. Oh, sleepy kittens, what else do you want to talk about? So do our cougars enjoy playing in the snow? Do they ever get the opportunity to do that? Our cougars love playing in the snow. They get to play in the snow whenever we have snow. So some years it's more and some years it's less. But when it's raining or snowing is one of their favorite times to come outside. Um, and actually this rock that's right here in the front of the exhibit is a heated rock. So when there is snow if you come, we've got to clear it off other spaces to make sure it doesn't get too slippery and that it's safe. But that rock stays warm all year round. So sometimes when it's real cold out, you'll see them actually curl up on that rock to stay even warmer. And that's just something nice that we like to give them. Because clearly, even though they could be in their little caves or on their hot rock, Yukon is up there in the windiest spot just because that's where she likes to hang out. Do the keepers give them any winter specific enrichment? I know we talked a little bit about the Christmas tree, which is pretty awesome. Is there anything else you guys do for the cold weather that's a little different than the rest of the year? So we do give them Christmas stuff. The Christmas tree is probably the best one. The only other stuff we can give them in winter really is when we have the snow. So when we have snow, we can do fun things like make them snowmen. And sometimes when you do that, you can add different smells to it. So there's an extra sensory experience for them instead of it just being cold. It might be cold and something to smell or cold and something to scratch at. Um, so those are some of the best good winter enrichments. Or you can give them frozen stuff because we'll give them blocks of ice and sometimes we'll put things in it that you might, might not like, like blood, gross. They love it. We'll give that to them in the summer to cool down 
but if we give it to them in the winter, it actually stays frozen longer. So it's something that they can play with for a longer period of time. Are they as playful in the snow as the otters, would you say? <laughs> um, they're almost never as playful as those otters. Those otters are really something. Um, these guys have short bursts where they're just really cute. And they will chase each other around and they'll, they kind of stalk and hunt each other. And we have some videos of that that we take when we see it. But you have to catch them in that right window. They, um, unlike the otters who will play pretty much whenever you toss them a toy and ask them to, these guys do not play on demand. They only play when they want to. So they're very playful, but less often than those otters. So they're pretty much just really big house cats, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> That's what that sounds like, right? Um, in that respect, <laughs> attitude-wise, they're very yeah. much like a house cat. Um, we did get a question from a viewer, and just a reminder, real quick, if anyone else has a question, feel free to po post that in the uh, comments, and we'll try to answer for it today. So Linda would like to know, what do they eat? Um, and I'm guessing that means both in the wild and here at the zoo. So in the wild, the thing that they eat the most is going to be deer, different types of deer species. So your white-tailed deer, and also where they range up to elk is going to be what they eat the most of. In the wild, they'll eat up to 30 pounds of it at a time. And then whatever they can't finish, they'll actually go ahead and cache. So they'll bury it with leaves and sticks. And when it gets real cold in the winter, they'll actually bury it in the snow to hide it from other animals. And they'll go back and keep eating it later. Even though they primarily try to hunt those bigger animals, in the wild, sometimes they'll eat smaller things. They'll catch a mouse or a bird. Um, they don't do that as often because it's a lot of work for not a lot of, not a lot of dinner. Um, one thing, they'll even actually catch any porcupines, which just seems like a lot of work for not a lot of return. But when you're desperate, you do what you got to do. Here in the zoo, we do not feed them 30 pounds at a time. These guys get a commercial zoo diet. They are carnivores, so they get all meat. Um, and they get on average between about three and four pounds a day. And then sometimes they get extra treats like chicken or fish or rats, but they usually just get that ground meat. And that's how we train them as well as what we use to reward them for coming outside. So you can see them and for coming back inside at night. Um, so that is the main part of their diet. So someone would like to know, um, is cougar fur soft and do they shed? It is so soft. I don't recommend that you try to touch it, um, but when we are training with them, we do some different things for desensitization, like we're trying to get them to let us draw blood from their tails, which means we have to be able to touch their tails to do that. It is very thick and it is very soft. And they shed, but not the same way that like your dog does. They don't tend to just leave clumps of hair around. They are cats, so they do groom themselves a lot. So I think a lot of that grooming process is to remove that undercoat when it's time. But they're not just leaving clumps of hair around. So uh, Kyle would like to know what would they do with that tree if they were if they were interested in it? What, what do they usually do with those Christmas trees? Mostly, more than anything, it's a scent enrichment for them. So what they do is they come out and they're like, what is that smell? And they do a lot of just rubbing on it. Um, and they'll make a phlegm in response which you've probably seen in a lot of different cat species, where when they smell something new or something really interesting, they make this really funny face that we call a stinky face. And that's so they can smell with their dick organs, um, which is a way that they can commit smells to memory. But they have to make this really funny face to open up those nasal passages to do it. So usually they just come and rub on it. Sometimes yesterday they knocked it over. Um, so I stood it back up today and they just don't care anymore. All right, it looks like uh, Linda would also like to know, can they climb very well? They can! That's why they've got this nice whole roof on there. Um, you can't put a cougar in an exhibit without a roof. These guys can jump straight up into the air as much as 18 feet. Anywhere from 15 to 18 feet from standing still straight into the air. From side to side, if they're running, they can make a running leap that's as much as 40 feet across. So that's a fun fact that I actually just learned that of all cats in the world, cougars have the biggest hind legs of any cat proportionally. 
because they need those for that running and jumping that they do. So they can, they can climb a fence that's 15 feet tall, wouldn't mean anything to them. So yep, climbing and jumping are very popular with cougars. They also, as ambush predators, need to be able to run real fast. They sneak up really close to their prey, and then once they're within about 50 feet or so, they have to be able to run fast enough to catch it before it can get away. So a cougar, over a short period of time, can run as much as 50 miles an hour. So Robin would like to know how much they weigh. I know we mentioned that earlier, but maybe you can mention again real quick how much Yukon and Russet weigh. So we weigh these guys anywhere from every week to once a month. Right now we're doing every two weeks. So last week, Russet, the male, weighed 112 pounds. And Yukon's a little bit smaller. She was 91 pounds. Awesome. So someone's asking, uh, Cynthia's asking, do they climb the tree? Um, so my guess is either the Christmas tree or even this big tree in the middle here. So that big tree in the middle is one of Russet's favorite places. And even if you go way up to the top, he will stand on those tiny little branches. And if he stands way up there, he's so close to the top that sometimes his ears just peek right through the roof. Um, he doesn't climb the trunk of it. He usually just goes from branch to branch around in a circle. And that's mostly because he's lazy and that's easier. But they do, they go all the way up in those trees. Um, and they'll also jump from the roof of the shelter where Russet is. They can jump from that roof all the way to where Yukon is laying. Um, I haven't measured that jump, but it's pretty big and they'll do it in both directions. So if they were up and doing stuff, it would be really impressive right now. All right, I think that's all the questions we have for now. Thanks so much, Mel, for uh, sharing the awesome cougar information for us today. You guys are very welcome. I'm sorry that they weren't doing stuff, but I love <laughs> I them still, anyway. I think they were still pretty cute to watch. So thank you guys for tuning in. If you have any further questions, feel free to pop them in the comments, and we can always come back later and try to answer those for you. And then tune in again tomorrow around 12. We will be doing another episode on another um, winter adaptation uh, animal. So please check us out then and have a great holiday, everybody.